frontier. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the man-made moon Sputnik. The launch of Sputnik marked the opening of space to human exploration. Space was and is the final frontier. Throughout most of our time in history, we have only been able to look up. It has only been a short time since we have been able to travel into space. With our advanced technologies that stem from the space race, we can now look further into the galaxy than ever before. However, none of our exploration of our solar system, our galaxy, and the universe would have been as rapidly developed if not for a small, beeping aluminum ball. On October 4, 1957, the space race started with the launch of Sputnik, the first artificial satellite into low Earth orbit where it would complete a circuit of the Earth every 96 minutes and emit a steady beeping noise. It stayed for three months before it disintegrated in the atmosphere as it crashed back to Earth. Sputnik's launch opened the door to space, but it also caused great fear in the general public of the U.S. Citizens feared what could become of this technology and losing the space race to the Soviet Union. The launch occurred shortly after the start of the Cold War, the post-World War II power struggle between the USSR and the USA. It is critical to understand what the space race was. The space race was a Cold War competition between the US and its arch enemy, the Soviet Union. The goal was to gain aeronautics and aerospace dominance. This satellite caused great fear in the US. Sputnik was the 9-11 of our day. People were shocked that Russia had a technology that could do this, and we didn't. Former astronaut Mike Mullane compared the launch to 9-11. Sputnik's launch also caused great jubilation in the Soviet Union and allied states. The Soviet Union used the launch to develop a propaganda campaign to spread their political ideology across the globe to developing countries that had not yet chosen whether they would become capitalist or communist. The U.S., on the other hand, used the launch to further the development of science and mathematics in education. Before the space race, there was the missile race, where the U.S. and Soviet Union claimed German rocket scientists after World War II. One such scientist that the U.S. claimed was Werner von Braun. And before that, there was the race to make the first nuclear bomb. President Eisenhower wanted to downplay the launch and not make a big deal about it. He said, this country has never been in a race, and that it wasn't a big deal in a press conference with the New York Times. Part of the reason that he did not want to make a big deal about the launch is he was told earlier in a debrief with the CIA that the Russians would launch a satellite soon. Surprisingly, the government knew that the Russians were about to launch a satellite, but that remained a secret until 2017. Another reason that Eisenhower wanted to downplay the launch is because he wanted to put spy satellites into orbit. Although the satellite did nothing other than beep, it caused nationwide concern that we were losing the space race. Senate Majority Leader Lyndon B. Johnson, a Democrat, had a very different strategy of how to deal with Sputnik. He stated, control of space means control of the world in a subcommittee summary statement. He used the launch as leverage to push for large spending bills from Congress. One such bill developed NASA, and the other bill was the National Defense Education Act. This event truly opened the door to space when it kicked off the space race due to the panic it caused among American citizens. The launch of the Soviet satellite also caused a self-examination of the education system and much dissatisfaction towards people in power, such as President Eisenhower. I guess the American people are alarmed that a foreign country, especially an enemy country, can do this. Definitely alarmed. What do you think about America not being able to do the same? Well... If I was in military service and fell down on a job like that, I could stand a court-martial. Somebody's fallen down on a job. Badly. The Navy was selected by the Department of Defense to launch Vanguard on December 6, 1957. Since there were many political benefits of sounding non-militaristic, the government chose the Navy and its rocket when the Army already had a fully operational ballistic missile and were ready to launch a satellite. In fact, they were told to put sandbags in the top of the launch vehicle so that they could not launch a rocket. Vanguard failed and blew up spectacularly on the launch pad. Here are official Defense Department films of the launching of the 72-foot missile, a loss of thrust, and fall back to Earth in split seconds. classified. 
Neither the satellite program nor our missile development is affected, said Acting Defense Secretary Quarles. It's only an incident in the perfection of the Vanguard satellite system. After that catastrophe of a launch, the Army was given 90 days to launch a satellite. At this point, the panic really started to set in. The failed launch increased the panic because the people knew that the Soviet Union could launch a satellite, and yet the United States, the supposed worldwide leader in technology and science, could not, was shocking to many people. After the Army was given a green light, they put a satellite into orbit in short order. This satellite was about 6 inches in diameter and about 30 pounds. Although it was launched successfully, it paled in comparison to Sputnik 2 that sent the first living being, a dog, Laika, into space. Although it was a brief victory for the U.S., the Soviet Union continued to beat the U.S. the early space race with many more firsts, such as Colonel Yuri Gagarin, first man in space, and Valentina Cherskova, first woman in space. However, despite early Soviet victories for the space race, the U.S. eventually beat them when they put a man on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Many technologies that have become ever-present in our daily lives now were developed at that time. However, equally as important as the technology developed during the space race was the Sputnik effect, a perceived fear of a technological gap. The self-examination of the education system of the United States was implemented by the public because they were afraid that they were behind after the launch of Sputnik. The politicians stroked that fear to use as leverage to pass the National Defense Education Act. I want to become hysterical, but let's become factual. Let's start telling the truth. And let's face the fact that we've taken a licking, psychologically at least, and scientifically. And it has embarrassed us throughout the world. This completely new area? Well, I think the consequences are fairly plain. Probable Soviet world domination. Even though they knew that we were not actually behind. What people found during the examination was a great disappointment. They found that as a direct cause of the baby boom after World War II, the American school system was bursting at the seams. As an effect of the large number of students, there was inadequate space, resources, and teachers. Because of the lack of space and teachers, the classrooms were full and at times unruly. Most of the teachers' time was spent on controlling the classroom rather than teaching. As an attempt to fix the numerous issues in the education system, there was a massive increase in school funding. This program was the National Defense Education Act. It was a $1 billion spending package. And what has become quite rare in politics today, the bill was passed with significant bipartisan support with over half the opposing parties in both houses voting yay on the bill. There were many new schools built as well as many teachers hired. The increase in funding for math and science was to try to get more kids to be scientists and engineers because those were seen as the most important jobs at the time. Many schools also had official and unofficial rocketry clubs. Some of those rocketry clubs lasted to the present day, such as the one shown here that is in McKinney, Texas. Some of the long-term effects of the examination of the education system were student loans as well as increased workloads for students. They started using hands-on laboratory experiments that scientists helped develop. It also caused a large increase in the number of school buildings and a decreased teacher-to-pupil ratio. One other long-lasting creation following the launch was the Internet. The Internet was created after Sputnik by American scientists led by MIT professor Jay Licklider so that information could be disseminated across the country after a nuclear strike. At this time, it was called ARPNET, or Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. It was the first packet switching network. The creation of ARPNET is believed to be one of the direct predecessors that paved the way for the development of the internet. Sputnik was one of those moments that changed everything. The effects of the launch were felt in all reaches of life and we are still affected by its launch today, as well as the following events of the space race. As Harvard researcher Madden said, Sputnik put a spotlight on a national problem, education. The technology developed during this time has led to many of the modern-day technologies that are ever-present in our lives today. Sputnik's effect was felt by many, whether they were teachers or students or politicians.